Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ah! Lili Nishma Asimim Rosh 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 Last night we had the schos of having uh, Rabbi Leader's son-in-law, Yisrael Lichter, he was here for the English year as well, first time ever. So the ah was like triple the, the sound because he was here, he was before the shear, he was telling everybody how it has to be done. So it, it's all about one guy leading it. So. Lead I'm not even saying No. I've always said a little bit of an update on the Shabbaton. So here's the, here's the one for Avi Kamiansky in honor, in honor of Avin Schneer, Nathan Kamiansky LLP. We appreciate your business and friendship. Anonymous. <laughs> you know who it is already? Ah, you do know. It's not anonymous anymore. And the uh, home stone over there on the bronze, that's uh, Avram Tekotsky. So that's the name of his place, home stone Yishkoyach. Baruch Hashem, beyond the wildest expectations, we, out of 440 rooms, we only have 150 remaining available, which I think is very, very good for, at this point, where we're a weekend. So it's very, very nice. Baruch Hashem. Go hop around your room. Go hop around some recharging of the batteries. Ruchnius, Kashmius, the whole thing. It's going to be unbelievable. This is Michal Brodman at Niagara doing the daf. Oh, we got with us Reb Gil. Reb Gil is a pilot. That's not for uh, private jets. And here he is. It's called Yeshiva Shalmala. He writes over here. <laughs> Dear Abeli, I first of all wanted to express my deepest hakarsa to you for all the work and effort you put into the incredible home of Torah. It has really made a huge difference in my life so far. I really enjoy the Torah, the guys, and the atmosphere, and Hobar Hashem, or Reza Hashem, to continue learning together for many more years to come. I'm often called up to Shemayim. <laughs> He's called up to Shemayim. And I wanted to share with you the good news. I found out last week that they learned Torah in Yeshiva Shema, that they, oh, they learn your Torah in Yeshiva Shemala, and I even took a picture. Here it is, here he is, in the cockpit with the shear. This picture was taken last Sunday, where I had the most unexpected flight. I got, to, got scheduled to fly to Debrecen, Hungary, thinking nothing of it. As it turns out, four from guys from Ashdod showed up for the flight and told me they rented the jet in order to go to Reb Shai of Christir's caver and dive for 30 minutes. In, out. Once I heard this, I decided to join them rather than go to the hotel for the eight-hour mandatory rest I was scheduled for. So one minute, they were also going to wait for eight hours? 30 minutes of davening, seven and a half hours of, 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 of messing That's around serious. over there, and then coming back. So even if you rent the jet, you can't even go for 30 minutes. Wait for the crew to rest. Unless you get another crew in there. And then, okay. Does he also fly helicopters? No. Oh. Not <laughs> You're already planning. You're already planning. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. How did Lech Lecha go? It's great. Are you getting used to it? Is it going faster? It's getting not faster, but I'm getting used to it. Good. Last night I was going to have someone leave some straw, some hay on your desk. And you uh-huh. say, what's this for? It's hay. What Hashem added to Avram's name. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. well, why didn't you show up last night? I was waiting for you. I had a bar mitzvah, simcha. Eitan, I don't want to <laughs> scold you in public. I'm just saying. But you know, you know how it works. I love, I love just, Every you said we have to always celebrate every opportunity. You yes, said it. but not on the account of Torah. <laughs> Torah comes first. I think the Jewish. You, you've done the daf enough with me to know. You saying. go to the bar mitzvah afterwards. <laughs> you go before Eitan, Eitan, Eitan. The hey, the this. You know, these are important things for Klai Yisrael. Okay, listen, next time I don't want you to slip like that. In fact, I even got the captain who's a non-observant. Look at this. Rabbi Isai got the, the captain who's a non-observant Israeli to come with us. Here he is, the captain. And, oh, I had a big shyla on this. It's a good thing Gil is here because they say, he came with us. We all went to the mikvah and the kever to go daven. The captain also? No. The captain went to the mikvah? Wow. He loved the mikvah. That's odd. We're, amongst other things, I dive for you. He dive for me at the caver. And continue and uh, dive for you and the continued success of MDY as a true token of my appreciation. It's great to have a real pilot 
in the Shir Yishmak. Oh, and we got Michael Arvid, uh, three of us. Look, propellers. He's a real experienced propeller. I'm not Jet Givaldic. Okay, cool. Um, Abba Rennert, Chvoid Rebelli. You often mention that Daf Yomi is like a Ferris wheel and there's no need to start with brachas and try to cram years worth of learning into a relatively short time in order to catch up to the world Siyam Mashas. You said that if you start, for example, on Avedi Zar, Daf Chav Ches, seven and a half years later is when you make your Siyam Mashas with the upside that no one realizes that you're learning Daf Yomi and you can get so much more covered. <laughs> I said that when you make your own Siyam, like you made your own Siyam one day, it was separate than all, all of Klai Yisrael. It was your own seum. Usually when you do a seum shots with all of Klai Yisrael, so, is that? I made my seum the same. That, like, later it was a month that. later. No, no. You came over. It was, it like, was when everyone it, was making seum. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, my mistake. I had an idea for those who joined in the last in the last while, and then get inspired to learn additional daven to shorten the time it would take to finish Shas. Tell the Shema, as it still won't help them to be invited on the cruise. Many people pick brachas as their additional daven, and then burn out when they realize they won't catch up. My idea is that after you learn the, that day's daf, if you want to learn more, <laughs> learn the Masechta that's right before the Masechta that you joined. Meaning, if you join for Baba Vasra and want to shorten the gap, don't start brachas. Rather learn Baba Metzio, which will be easier to finish because you know that when you finish it, you already did the next Masechta, B'yedidos Abba Renert. Oh, Rabbi Isai, you keep your mouth shut now. I'm asking you. Yes, listen, because I know that you're about to jump. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know what I mean, in a nice way. Rebelli, respectfully. Not all from American Jews agree that Trump will be better for Klai Yisrael. Hate crimes began to rise at the onset of the Trump era. Many believe that this rhetoric made it more acceptable to openly hate. And this hate, as it has many times in our history, made its way to Jews. Yes. There's a very loud minority in the Dem- Democratic Party that has become increasingly more anti-Semitic. More anti-Semitic. But they are a minority, and many of us don't believe that the current administration, including Harris, is associated with that trend. Okay? But regardless of that, Trump won fair and square, and American people spoke, and many American Yids have spoken. As a proud American patriot Jew, I respect the results of the election, and I hope Trump succeeds. And here's Hashem, who will be good for Klai Yisrael. But there are many of us who believe. What does he want? He wants to say that not everybody believes that it'll be better for the Jews. I, I needed to, to say so. Yes, he has a Jewish son in law and a Jewish grand, grandchild. Just think we should be careful how much we celebrate and claim that Hashem made this happen for the good of Klai Yisrael. I think that no one should think that it's beyond a person, that a person is in charge. I, I just said it's a sign from Hashem that he did not abandon us. It looked like things were going bad. There's a program in Amsterdam. There's a program in the college. There's, who knows, ain't safe, terrible things that happened to Jews this past year. And it was a nice, it was a light. Now that he got elected, Qatar already said, we're closing our Hamas office. Hamas office already, come on. Right. Again, I hope I'm wrong, but Trump doesn't share our values. Let's don't be so quick to celebrate. Respectfully, Yomi, Yonatan Dinora. Okay. Well, somebody else wrote to me that he's an illegal immigrant from Jew, illegal immigrant. He says, Trump is terrible. They're going to kick him out of the country. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Panasayoyim. Hakor Satoyiv. Lemoyi Rabbi Shechayigig HaShavua, five years. Anyways, Shapsi Cohen uh, dedicated the day that he's, he's doing three years straight. I did five years straight. And it's all because of Shamshi Shlafrak who got Shapsi Cohen to join the Shir. That's how it works. <laughs> The Masechta Rabbi Yisai is sponsored for the safe and speedy return of all the hostages. Parnas HaChoydesh renewed. Lili Nishma Zechayi B'Moyesha, Lili Nishma Zechayi Bas Yosef. Parnas HaChoydesh. The Lach family, Lakewood, New Jersey, because Torah is the best segula. I found out that that nice uh, Tesla that I showed yesterday with all the, it said MDY, MDY on the license plate and all the stickers. You know whose car that is? The Chanan Pressman's. Rebel Chanan Pressman. <coughs> Paras Achodesh Yosef Ben Chai Sorry for pronouncing the Rebbe. Paras Achodesh Kinevations LLC in order of my uncle Rebbe Chana Pressman and officials should be schus vakiv simple Ben Pega Shidduch for Rivka Yehudis Bas Yafet Chayu and thank you to Rebbe Sin Stefanski. It should be schus for a year filled with Mazel Brach and Slacha. Paras Rebbe and Rifua. Paras Shavua we have three of them. Rifua Shlema for Yosef Chaim Shmuel Ben Alten Achama for his from his grateful family. Rifua Shlema and by the one and only Gedalia Miller schus. For Mayor Shapir, Zechitzal Gavrochel, the Shabbaton of Keshenavshi.org in England, 
which was a tremendous success. And Parnas Hayoim Yossi Farkas Lezeich Nishmas Tzvi Ben Yosef darted them on for Schutz for Rebellion and hold them the way staff to continue to make toys on drugs so many. And the coffee corner of the week, Yankee broke her full shleima because she had a razor baschano. She had a large liver issue. She was two years. She's two years old. She should have a refuah shleima. So we are holding on Daf Kuflam and Zayinam and Beis all the way in the bottom. Three lines from the bottom. Omar Rav Yehuda, Omar Shmuel. Hakoysev nechosev laacher. Listen to this. Somebody decides he wants to give his stuff to someone else. $10 million. I don't want your $10 million. Too bad. So the Gemara understands for this moment, we're going to explain. Okay? I know everybody's going to have questions. In one second, we're going to explain. Kana. Too bad. He, he's the proud new owner of all these new belongings. Even if he's standing there and screaming. What's a good example of somebody who wants to give his friend a piece of real estate and that friend doesn't want the real estate? Don't want it. I don't want it. He screams, I don't want it. I don't want it. Why would a person not want a piece of real estate? It's a bad neighborhood. Okay. It's in a great neighborhood. It's in a great area. It's in the middle of Manhattan. Huh? His income bracket goes up. His yeah. income bracket goes up. What, by owning a piece of real estate? Nah, that doesn't. So the, one answer could be that if, let's say, somebody owes $10 million, <laughs> but he doesn't own any real estate, and then Shemitah comes. What's that, Lacha? He doesn't, he, doesn't he doesn't owe any money because Shemitah is Mishamet. So what do you do? If somebody owes you money and Shemitah comes, you go and you make a prusbal. But a prusbal only works if that person owns a piece of real estate. So what do you do? You try to get him to get a piece of real estate. You say, yeah, take this apartment. It's good for you. It's good for you. He's like, what do you think? I'm stupid? Give it to me after Shemitah. Then we'll talk. Right now, I don't want an apartment because if I get an apartment, I'm going to owe you $10 million. So that could be a way. But anyway, whatever it is, the guy does not like gifts. Okay? Gifts are not good. By the way, here, here's a question. If you know the answer to this, raise your hand. Don't scream it out. If you know anything about this, don't scream it out because you can ruin it. Who's the author of the famous saying, Soina Matana Sichia? You hate gifts, you'll live. Who's the author? Anybody? You know? Time out, time out, time out. You know? I might pick on you. You sure? You know? Okay, who said it? Correcto. Shleiman Melech. A lot of people think it's a Gemara. Soina Matana. Very good. So there's a concept called I don't want a gift. Gifts are no good. So, Rabbi Yechonon says, no, if you scream, you don't, you can't force somebody to acquire something. So the Gemara goes to explain it immediately. There's no machlegs at all. When a guy screams and screams, I don't want it, don't even give it to me, there's no way in the world I'll take it. So he doesn't get it. There's no Shiloh, you don't get it. When a person is quiet, in the beginning, he says, here, I have a beautiful piece of property for you, here, take it. He gives it to him, he gives him the documents, here, take it. You don't say anything, you're quiet, shash still. And then five minutes later, you realize, whoa, what a mistake. He fooled me. He just gave me a piece of real estate. Now I owe him $10 million. And then he starts screaming. It's too late. I have a question for the Oilam. <coughs> if I want to give you a gift, I say, here, take this box of cash. Here, there's a million dollars in here. I want to give you the gift. And you say, no, 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 I don't want the gift. Who owns this box of cash? The original guy, if he doesn't want to take it, so you take it back. Everybody agree with Repair Tzchayim? Unless he says Hefker. He doesn't say Hefker, he says, take it. So let's see what the Rishbam says. It says Rishbam, Omer Rishlokish, top Rishbam over there. Hanoisim atan al-chaveir v'omer alo yevsha, kol ha-machzik v'ozacha, it's Hefker. V'askin and hosan ki Rishlokish, Rishlokish paskins. If once I give it to you, 
then I release it from my, from, from my domain. I give it to you. Now you don't want it. So now it goes in a middle ground. And anybody can go ahead and grab it. Escrow? escrow? Like an escrow. escrow. No, escrow, you can't take it. This is like anybody could go pick up the ownerless, ownerless. The opposite of escrow. The opposite of escrow. <laughs> There's going to be a bunch of things, Eitan, that today is the opposite of what you thought. You thought you go to Bar Mitzvah, today you learned you don't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a Maisa, new Maisa. The part of it, Shirov, Rav Kahanaman, he was in Europe, and there was somewhat of a debate. There was a meeting between the Reform and the Orthodox. And the Reform rabbi said, told the Orthodox president, president of the Orthodox synagogue, says, stand up. So the guy stands up, he says, do you keep Shabbos? So the guy starts, um, I have a lot of kids, and he says, I asked you a question, answer, yes or no, do you keep Shabbos? Are you Shabbos? He says, like I said, I struggle sometimes, that I, have a, I have a whole family, just answer the question, yes or no? He says, no. He says, okay, I rest my case, sit down. So Rav Kadman was there, and he says, could I say a few words? Yeah. He tells the, that rabbi, the reformed rabbi, who asked the question, he says, stand up. So the rabbi stands up and says, are you Shomer Shabbos? He says, no. Look, not, the Orthodox president is not even Shomer Shabbos. I'm not Shomer Shabbos. He says, okay, sit down. But if Kahneman said, if you think that the two answers are the same, you made a mistake. The first guy was embarrassed. He was fetching. He tried to get out of it. After three times, he said, okay, I'm a Michal Shabbos. The rabbi, he was, no problem. Not Shem Shabbos. This guy, he wants to do tshuva. He's going to be a Shem Shabbos very soon and everything. This guy, I don't know about. He says, Nafkemino, if you, how you say it and when you say it. When you say right away, no, so it's a no. If you start, eh, 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 and then there's something else that's different. Kam tzavach mikora, kam b'shoisek, mikora l'vsev tzavach. Omer of Nachman bar Yitzchok. And as we say it, we come into Machlaikis, as we say it, Rib Hillel walks in. Ah! I'm sure he's working hard last night on Saturday night when all the offices in LA are open and this and that. Whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> what? <laughs> so we're going to see this is the Machlaikis. There is no Machlaikis somewhere else. The what? Oh, I got to show you this. First of all, we're talking about Soyna Matanas Yichia. So, right? So, this is the, the Pasuk, the Soyna Matanas Yichia. Um, we have a, a little video of here of why sometimes people don't like gifts here. Soyna Matanas Yichia, you all know about Amazon and porch pirates in America. Here in Erdistral, it's not so common because Amazon is not so common or people don't steal off the porch. But over here, there's no porches. <laughs> He's trying to get a matana for himself. A little explosion. <laughs> He's a sign of matanas now. <laughs> this is a real matana, a boy say matana. <laughs> This is another tie in the Matana. This is Matana. If you get this for your wife, she won't, she won't appreciate it. Never She'll never ask okay. you. Here, this is a sign of Matana for a wife. Nice. Try to get one of these, especially a from from wife. Zagdigimara. It works. You know, in those shows, they push that button of the laughter. <laughs> it helps you get in the. <laughs> so this is it. What happened? Perz Chaim standing over here. He's sitting over here. He's watching this whole thing. I go to to, to Nach and I said, "You see this beautiful asterisk? We're going to keep it till next year. I want you to be zoicha this for Perz Chaim. That's it. That's what happened. No, no, no. Now, what does he do? If he screams, that's one thing. If he doesn't scream, it's another thing. That's where the whole machlaikah is. It's not about me and you. The whole Gemara until now is like, here, take this, take this. And you don't say anything. Not... So let's see. The Gemara says, it's another person. 
And he's standing right there. He's sitting there. Now, that mm-hmm. is a little different than the famous thing that we always say. Here. What do we always say? Zachan l'adam shalei b'fano. You can be zayichet for something not in front of him, but he's standing in front of you. So what is this called? This is called zechia. Zechia. Uh, you make the kinyin for him. He's there. You make it for him. Here's machloik. So what's the machloik? It's saying, I write everything to Peretz Chaim Levin, and one of the things in there is a slave. And Peretz Chaim says, I don't want your slave. Why, don't, why doesn't he want a slave? Says the Rishbam, because it's expensive. This is the upkeep. You have to feed the guy, insurance, everything. I need a bed for, I don't, it's a nice thing to have, but I don't want it. Too bad. If Peretz Chaim Levin is a koyin, the, the slave of a koyin eats truma, since Peretz Chaim Levin, the second dude, is a koyin, so this, this slave that I forced him to take is his. The Gemara is going to explain everything. Rabbi Shimon Gamliel Oimer, Kibin Shomer Halo, E. F. Shibahem, Kvarzokhobahem, Yarshim. As soon as the Paris Chaim Levine says, I don't want the slave, so who gets the slave? My Yarshim. Now, that's a little bit different than what we said before. Before, I showed you the Rishbam that says that if I give somebody something and he doesn't want it, it becomes Hefker, not escrow, the opposite of escrow, and you can take it. Over here, Shem Gamaliel says, no, it stays, remains by the giver. And we ask the question, how does it make any sense? If a guy stands and screams, he says, I don't want it. You, you could force a slave into his, he doesn't want a slave. He's anti-slaves. What are you going to force a slave? So Rav explains, or Rabbi Yechon explains, When a person screams all the way in the beginning, so this, this, this makes a seder to the whole sugya. Here it is. Rabbi Yisai, here's the synopsis of the sugya. When a person says, I don't want it, he doesn't get it. When a person is quiet, for a moment, he does get it. So where's the machlaikas? When he screams immediately, I don't want it, he doesn't take it. You can't force him to, to acquire something. Shosak, if he was quiet for a moment, so during that moment that he was quiet, he acquired it. And then afterwards he screamed, there's no machlaikas. The kani, 100%, he's kaina. Ki pligi the whole machlekes is in this case. So I give to Reb Nachman, Reb Nachman gives to Reb Peretz Chaim. In that case, Shazik like the Yacher, Vishosak, and he's quiet. When he was quiet and then he screamed, only when there's a third person involved, then there's a machlekes. If it's one on one, there's no machlekes. If he's quiet in the beginning, he got it. If he wasn't quiet, he doesn't get it. If he involved a third person, Reb Nachman Seltzer over here, then it becomes a machlekes. Why? The Tanakhama Sovar made the Shosa Kaninu. Tanakhama says, Why was he quiet, Peretz Chaim, for one second, for ten seconds? That's it. He acquired it. Then all of a sudden he started screaming too late. All of a sudden he made the calculation that it's not good for him. His wife is going to be upset that he brought home a slave. Da, 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 da. He started screaming. Too bad. He accepted it, accepted it. Rabbi Shim Gamaliel Sovar. Rabbi Shim Gamaliel says, No. The end of the story explains why he was quiet in the beginning. The reason why I didn't scream, it took him five minutes. Because he said to himself, what purpose is there for me to scream? He has it. I don't want to make a bazillion out of myself. It's a gnai, says the Rishbam. I'm going to start screaming. Stop. He's holding it. When he tries to deliver it to me, then, then I'm going to make a fuss. <coughs> if you want a gift, hold on, what? If you're giving to a second guy, you give to the third guy, and the third guy's quiet. It could just be because the third guy thinks that the kinyan is not call because he never made the second guy shliach. So he's thinking, what does this have to do with me? Yeah, but that's not the halacha. The halacha is you don't have to make a guy shliach. It's zachin lodim shleim fun of or zachin. If it's something good, everybody wants a million dollars. So if he's doing it for you and you're watching it and you didn't say anything, automatically it becomes yours. You don't have to know that halacha. You have to go to yeshiva to know this stuff. You have to do that for you. I mean, everybody should know these halachas. 
Ignorance of the law is not a, is not a defense. So, but there's another, there's another logic here. The reason why he doesn't want to just scream, scream, stop to scream. No, oh, which if he doesn't scream, then I'm cutting it for him. Cutting the general deal. No, but I get it for him. I'm cutting it for him. No, he's like, no, so he's I'm until I get it. Correct. He's but saying I don't want to. Listen. It's not too late. He's saying there's, there's a reason why I didn't scream. As long as there's a reason why I didn't scream, let's say he couldn't scream because he, he can't talk. He has something in his mouth he's it eating. Help. It does help. No, you have to have the ability to scream. And he's saying that that ability doesn't occur when you're sitting in front of him and he doesn't have it yet. He thinks you're stam hacking. And the Gemara explains, the reason why I didn't scream, what point is it? And the Rishbam sticks in. It's an embarrassment to stam scream. I'll give you, the, uh, there's a famous Maisa. Uh, we have a lot of Karlina Hasidim in our shir, and they're like a big part of the shir. Shmaka guys. So there's a famous Maisa where it's known that Karliners, if you ever go to Karlin, they scream during diving. That's their minute. So one, one Karlina guy he comes to somebody else's show, some Rebbe, and he starts screaming. So the Rebbe calls him outside and says, Can I speak to you for a second? Yeah. They go outside, and the Rebbe starts screaming at him. What are you doing? I don't understand you. So the guy says, Why are you screaming at me? I, I, you could talk nicely. He says, That's my point. You could dive in nicely. Hashem hears you. So the Karlina said, No, no, no. I'm not screaming that Hashem should hear me. Of course, Hashem hears me. I'm trying to invoke passion within myself. I'm trying to be more of myself. That's why I scream. He says, ah. Okay, so that's the famous, that's that Maisa. But there's a, uh, a continuation. It's Ramey Shapiro, because this is the art side. Ramey Shapiro, he's once at a show, and he, he walked out of there, and he says, you know, they just came up with this new thing called ice cream. And it says on the, uh, it says on, on the sign of this ice cream place, it says, cold ice cream? The Heksher of the rabbi. He says, that's what I felt in the show. A bunch of cold, I don't know if they were Litvaks or whatever, but a bunch of a cold people with a rabbi there. Anyway, just thought, I say, screaming, davening. Okay, but there's a Gavaldika thing. I say this all the time. There's a Maisa, but it's good to say it once in a while. There was a, there was a, one of these countries that they changed the border, and the border, they moved it over, and now the, the cemetery was outside of the border. So anytime they wanted to bury somebody, they had to cross the border. So they crossed the border, and one of the guys in the in the procession over there in the in the in the Levaya, he realizes that because it's a Levaya, they're they're kind of lenient. They let you go. So he said, "Oh, you know, let me let me schlep a, a bottle of booze. I'll bring it over the border. I'll make some money." So he brings it over, and nobody said anything. And then the next Levaya, he starts packing in next to the mace. He puts in you know five ten bottles over there, and they let it through. And then this genius, he says, "You know." Why do I need a dead person and put five bottles? I'm just going to take a coffin, fill it up all with liquor, and just roll it right through, bring 10 friends, and we'll roll it through. So that's what he does. He rolls it through, and as they're getting through, the guy says, stop, 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 open up the, the coffin. He says, no, 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 it's all against our religion. We can't. It's, it's not covered in mace. Open up the coffin right now. Okay, so they open up the coffin. They find the booth. They say, okay, all you guys, we have to put you in jail. So the guy starts crying. So he says, shaita. Had you been crying as you're walking through the border, I would have thought it's a funeral. You are crying. You guys are jolly, hacking around. You didn't act like a funeral. That's how I call you. Now the cry is too late. And they say, sometimes you dive in first, you cry first, then you can be saved from... Wait, to ride to the other side. <laughs> what? Wait, to ride to the other side. Can't scream right away. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other shita. That's the Tanakama. That's the Tanakama. Huh? I don't know. I spoke with Shami Shalom and Mabrochim. You put the cry there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before Hashem Edrush, this Maisa. Could be. Huh? But by the case of Zachem Shadim, Shalom Bufana, the Milwee, it's bad for him because, like you said, he has an outstanding loan and he does the right. property. Would, would he talk with that still work or not? Why not? Because You're saying, you, we don't, right? yeah, but we don't, I don't know that we check every case individually and this and that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it would be up a creek. I'm saying in the general case, we have certain things that we say no. Like, uh, uh, the, the get, the this, you know, different things. We said no, but in general, cause a punk happens to be a problem for you. I don't think it's a. I think. Torah Rabbanu, Shkiv Merasha Omar Tnu Mosayim Zuz Leploini Ushloish Meis Leploini Varba Meis Leploini. A guy is dying. He doesn't leave anything over for himself. He says, "I want to give this friend two hundred And within the same sentence, he says, "I want to give three hundred to the other guy. I want to give four hundred to the other guy." 
If he was a healthy guy, this wouldn't work. This wouldn't be an issue because a healthy guy gives each person individual presents. Here is a gift to so and so. Here is a gift to so. Shkimera, he's dying. He has, you know, it's his last breath. He's uh, this guy, two, three, four, all in one sentence. So Gemara says, just because he said this guy two hundred first, and and the last guy said four hundred, doesn't mean that the guy that has that got two hundred has a better position over him. They're they're all equal in their position. So if somebody comes to claim to take money out of the estate, they all have to pay equally. So let's do the calculation here. There's 200 plus 300, that's 500, plus 400 is 900. So I, I just, Lesaber says, and this is one of my favorite riddles, I've said this a bunch of times, so if you remember the answer, please don't answer it. Give somebody a chance, but it's Gishma. There's 10 piles of books, and each pile has 10 books, and each book weighs one pound. Okay? Again, there's 10 piles, as you see, one through three through 10. And each pile has 10 books. And each book weighs one pound. But there's one pile that each book weighs two pounds, and you can't see it from looking at it. Now, you have a scale behind, and whatever you put on the scale, it tells you how much it weighs. You can weigh once. One time you can weigh on the scale, and you can figure out which of the 10 piles is the bad pile that has books that weigh two pounds. What is the answer? How do you weigh it? You only have one time. You can't keep on taking a book, one book from pile two and one book from pile three and then put it on the, it doesn't work like that. You have to do one time. So this is the question that my brother-in-law asked me as he's fahering me. He took me out. My brother-in-law, Moshe Friedman, was the Roshiva of the Sivasar. When I was in the, we were together in the mirror, he says, okay, you, you're thinking about marrying my sister after we have to go out for dinner. He asked, he asked me this question, and not before, not after, Akash Baruch gave me the answer like in a millisecond. I never heard the real, I, I told him the answer, he's like, whoa, okay, yeah, you're right. Nice to show you, serious. I tried to do that afterwards, it didn't work ever. I was just, uh, after Shemaya. No? Avrami, what's the answer? I, not that you heard this before. Nus, what's the answer? Tell everybody. What's the answer? One from the first, two from the second, three from the second. Right. Very good. It's a very, very simple answer. Pretend the, 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 the riddle is only on three piles. One, two, and three. So what you do is you take one book from pile one, two books from pile two, and three books from pile three. If they all weighed one pound, you'd have how many pounds? Six pounds. But if you have seven pounds on the scale, that means it came from pile number one. And if you have eight pounds on the scale... That means that the books came, the, the odd books are from pile two. And if you have nine pounds, that means you have, okay, so that's how, yeah? That's how you do it. One from pile one, two from pile two, three from pile three, four from pile four, nine from pile nine, etc. And then you can figure out, just to do a simple math, you'll know which pile it came from. Why is that negated to here? Because maybe it's not. But it says over here like this. Let's say the first guy received 200 from this dying man. The, third, the second guy got 300. The, fourth guy, the third guy got 400. Total of 900. 2 plus 3 plus 4, 9. So says the Gemara, if let's say the guy that's dying owes 9 Zuz, so you take 2 Zuz from the guy that got 200, you take 3 Zuz from the guy that got 300, and 4 Zuz from the guy that got 400. In other words, it's all relative to the amount that you received and the amount that's owed, that's how much you pay. Don't say, oh, the guy that got 200, so he locks it in. And then afterwards he said, okay, plenty gets 300, so that guy locks it in. And we take all the money from the last, last guy. No. Each individual has to pay relatively to how much he received. Aval, but it changes. Aval, Omar, Tumus, Ayim, Zuz, Leplenim, Achro, Leplenim, Achro, Leplenim. If he sticks in the word Achro, and after this, so and so, Oyrim, Kalakad, Mishtar, Zaycha. Whoever is first in line, he received it first. Lefichoch, Yotzal, Lefshtar, Chayv, Goivim, and Achrin. And therefore, the guy that received it last, he has to pay everything. Let me ask you a question. If I give you $200, $400, and I, I have a loan, I owe somebody money. Do you have to pay my loan? It's cash. <laughs> the answer is no. So what's going on over here? It says the Rosh it can't be cash. It must be talking about real estate. He gave 400 worth of real estate, 300 worth of real estate. Or he gave cash that's in a big pile, but the people never received it. Okay. Another point that the Rosh says, 
even though the last guy got the most money, and it would seem from the from that that he loves the last guy the most. Why do you give the other friend two hundred and the last guy four hundred? Nevertheless, the last guy is stuck with the bill. In this case, when he said Akhra Bakhra. Now, Ainloy, what if this, the last guy that's 400 cannot pay the loan because the loan is 500? Then you take a, another 100 from the, from the second guy to get 300. Ainloy, and if the loan is 800 and the last two guys got 300 and 400, it's only 700, there's not enough for them to pay the loan. Then you go to the one right before. You got it? It's like seven lines from the bottom. A guy, this is an interesting sugya. We know, Shom Aleichem, by the way, what's your name? What's the first name? Nathan. Nathan Fisher from Eretz Yisrael. Monroe. Givaldek. We love Monroe. Keep on going, keep on getting them. One by one. One by one. Don't tell me you work in B&H. You got the word Nathan from B&H. Nussin! Yeah. We know what Nussin is here. I know, Litvax also say Nussin. <laughs> ah, I got it. Shkoyach, Reb Nussin. Okay, so, you know that uh, Poop and, and Satmer, they have a lot to do, right? Nussin. Poop and Satmer are, are close, shtickle related in, in Hasidus? Not really? Because Yossi Klein is a Poop and Chosid. And he's the, he's the guy running the whole Shabbaton, the charity, everything. CEO, the music client. Anyway, so says the Gemara. Oh, it's very interesting. When a person says something, uh, a person repeats himself. Could you like infer from his words, is a person like a Mishnah? The Mishnah says extra word. Why is it extra word? Uh, every word is, is measured. So we infer it. Because the Mishnah said like this and like that. Uh, what if a human being says Stuff that he shouldn't be saying. He says extra. Can we infer from him? So that's the machlaikis here. That's we had it in the beginning of the second, and now we have it again. You'll all remember the, the case. I'll show you, and he says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then what? A father says to his son, I want you to have 200 zuz, b'ni b'char kara'ulay. These words are extra, because a b'char gets an extra, an extra chalik, whether you like it or not. So why does he say kara'ulay? Can we infer from his extra words? Says the Gemara, Noitlon, the Noitel is Bukharasa. He gets double. He gets his double portion, plus he gets an extra gift of 200. <coughs> I want you to take this 200 as your Bukhara, nothing extra. So he doesn't get the Bukhara plus 200, but he gets to choose the better of the two. Rata Noitlon, he could take the 200 if that's more than the Bukhara. What? Let me ask you a question. Raboisa, let's see if anybody remembers. Can you give a Bukhar less than his Bukhar portion as a Yerusha? As a Yerusha, I want to give the Bukhar, you know what, instead of you getting extra portion, here, take half of extra portion. Can you do that? Why not? It's a Pasuk. You cannot change around the portion. The Bukhar's portion stays solid. As the Yerusha, you want to change it as a gift, as something else. So now we're going to have three cases that are very, very similar besides the Chayv, but they're all the same case. A guy who's dying, he says, give 200 to my wife. How much is a Ksuba typically? 200. And he says, give 200 to my wife. So now he just added, in addition to the Ksuba, he added another 200. She gets those 200. When he tells the Ksuba, she also gets the Ksuba. Im Omar Big Suba, so he didn't say Karayla, he just said Kufalam and Chesam with Beis. If he just said Big Suba, Yadel Yaina, she could decide. Right, so Nitalton. If, if she's Ashkenazi, she takes that little extra. Right, so Nitel Suba, so if she's Sfardi and there's $500,000 in that Suba, like a lot of Sfardim do, go with the Suba, trust me. How much? 52000 there's a lot of money in there. Turning it off, the Berkovici family, the Schus Klai Yisrael, and by Glenn Esterson, dedicated to Gilad Jacob Israel, thank you for bringing the daf into my life. Baruch Hashem. Ushimira, third story. Shomart Numa Saim Zuzla Plani Balchoivi, I owe so and so money, give him 200 Koroyoloi, and he added the words Koroyoloi, Night Lave, Night Elis Chaivai. 
the Baal Chayv takes the 200 plus, he takes the money that was owed on the loan. What's my question, Rabbi Isai? Who said that? Me. Who else is asking the question? Ribis. I don't know what the answer is. Well, L'chayr, the answer is, Wizzily Melech, big ma- he's not here today, the Mumchen Ribis. L'chayr, he's not paying off the loan. The guy is dying. He wants to pay the loan, plus he wants to give his friend a gift. Well, you're not going to give a friend a gift, a parting gift. Because nobody really discusses it, so I'm assuming that that's the pshat. The Gemara does discuss. In a What's second, we are going to discuss. What? What's the problem? What happened? problem is, the guy owes somebody money, and he's dying. So he says, listen, pay him off, plus give him 200. Is that Rivas? It wasn't uh, announced before the loan that I'm going to pay back X amount plus that. As he pays back the loan, he gives him a gift. Now, typically, it's a little bit problematic. But in this case, for some reason, it's not such a problem. <laughs> what? It's for sure not. That's what I said. It's not cuts it. Right. Right. If you're giving it, as nothing to do with the original person. No, no, no. You, you owe money. You, a person, a Ruben owes Shimon money. You're not allowed to give someone else something? No, no, it's not somebody else. Don't, don't confuse. Time out. Case. Ruben owes Shimon $200. And as he's dying, he says, pay back Shimon $200 plus give him $200. Mm-hmm. Ribis or not Ribis? So, not Ribis. Says over here, not Ribis. Now, ask the Gemara, Mishum Omar Karayla, Inoyta Venoyta Deschayvai? What, because of who? Oh, sorry. Vim Omar Bichayvai. But if he said, I want this extra $200 to be for the loan, Noytlam Bichayvai. Then he doesn't get the double. He only gets that. Why? Because... Let's say if, if he gave him more than his loan, then it would be ribbis. Now the Gemara is talking about ribbis. The first time it's not ribbis. Because the guy said an extra word, Karoyla, that's why he deserves more than the actual debt. The debt was 200, now he gets 400 because he said the extra word, Karoyla. Maybe what he meant is what, he de- what, what he's deserving in the loan, and it's only 200, not 400. The answer is, says the Gemara, Omar Nachman, Omar Li Huna. He calls him Huna, not Rav Huna. Because they were very good friends. Everybody has to remember, Rav Nachman was the greatest Talmud that Shmuel had, and Rav Huna was the greatest Talmud that Rav had. But they were great friends. We saw the other story like two days ago that he said, go ask my father, your father-in-law, what, do, do you pass it like your BIC? You don't pass it like your They were good friends. So he says, Omar Li Huna. Huna told me, Rav Huna told me, Homani Rebbe Kivihi. This goes according to Rebbe Kivihi, the Daik Vishnu Yatiro, that even when a simple human being, not a Tana, a simple human being, adds some funny words like, Karayloi, we understand what he means. We have to start inferring what he means. Ah, I'm going to show you the picture. You're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Remember this picture? Oh, how can you not know this? A guy sold a house, and he told him the size of the house. It's like this, and it's like that. And if the house has, let's say, a swimming pool, or it has a well inside that inside the house, it has a well. We said, I'll just do this real quickly, so you see. Then the guy keeps for himself the pool. Why? Because he didn't sell it. He sold him a house. The problem is he doesn't have a pathway to get to the pool. So he has to use a drone, he has to use a diving board, whatever he has to do to get in, in and out of the pool. Or, this is better, let me just show you this. He sold him a bar or a dos. A dos means it's a well that has bricks. A sister. Now, it's in the house. It's not included in the sale of the house. I'm selling you a house, it does not include a bar. So, just to remind you of this, a guy sells somebody a well inside somebody else's house, According to Chachamim, the, according to Chachamim, he sold him the right of way. He does have a passageway. No? Huh? No, no. Don't do it. Come, just walking, walking. But kids are, he has the right of way. Okay. Why? That's the famous Machloikis. I don't want to go through the whole thing here. But Moicher by Yafa Moicher is like counterintuitive. According to Rabbi Kiva, a person sells, he's very generous when he sells. So when he sells, he sells away his whole rite of passage. He keeps for himself the pool, he keeps for himself a cistern, but he doesn't have a passage. Fine. 
That's not the point. That is the point, actually. A person usually gives away the, 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 his, the, the pathway. He's, he's generous. Chacham say a person buying raw moicher. He's not generous. Fine. Says the Gemara, we'll just say Valpeh, that if he adds one word, then Rabbi Kiva agrees that he's not generous. Then he keeps himself the pathway. Why? Because he added one word. So you see the Rabbi Kiva darshins, extra words that people say. He must buy off the, the guy that bought the house from him. He has to buy the right of way to get to his pool. Otherwise, he has to jump off a diving board. He doesn't have to. And Rebbe Kiva admits that if he said the extra words, why would a person add two words? Now you would say, the reason why he said, I'm selling you the house besides the cistern, besides the well. He just wants to, you know, make sure that that's how it goes. No, 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 don't say extra words. Wells are not included. Why are you saying besides the well? Oh, you're saying besides the well because you want to tell him that you want the pathway also. Oh, so I'm a dyke from your extra words. Then the pathway is included. Almost, you see from here, since he didn't have to say those words, and he said them anyway. He was adding something He's adding the pathway, hachanami. So in our sugi also, when a guy owes money and he says, pay him back, why do you have to say karoiloi? What kind of words are those? Ah, oh, he's like a tana. Those extra words come to say, give him double, give him this plus whatever I owe him. A guy that's dying says, that guy owes me money. That guy owes me a million dollars. Here's the question. Could two witnesses write a star that they heard a guy die and say, so-and-so owes me money. What a shmegegi. He owes me a million dollars. Never pay me back. Could they write it down or not? What's the problem? If they write it down, maybe somebody will use this star. This kid will use the star. Look, it says Mufurish that so-and-so owes my father money. But, but it was written just to say, hey, we heard this. We witnessed somebody said it. Who cares if, if the guy dying said it? It doesn't make it legal. No, something wrong could come out of this. Perhaps. So-and-so owes me money. It's not a problem. They can write whatever they want. Even though they don't know if it's true or not. Therefore, if they can write whatever they want, you can't use this as a real star that so-and-so owes money. It was just repeating over what the dead person was saying. The dying person was saying. No way. Don't write anything unless you yourself know why. Because we have a famous concept that's called. Here we go. So Rishbam brings it. We say you jump to the middle of Rishbam. Um, if there's two witnesses on any document, we, we assume that the Bezdin um, interviewed the witnesses and they, they established that it's legit. That you don't write anything down unless you know 100% it's right. Therefore, it's so powerful, this document, that you could collect a million dollars without bringing any proof, because that is your proof. If there's two witnesses written down it, that means that it actually happened. And now we have the same exact thing, but in reverse. Tana, Rav Meir, Oimer, A second ago we said, Rav Meir says, you do write. Over here, it's Rav Meir is the one that says, you don't write. The Chomer, Rav Meir, before we said, Chomer, say, you don't write, and now it's Kaisim. Vav, Rav Meir, Lo Yomar, Elam, Mishum, Bezin, Toyin. The whole point is that we're concerned that Bezin are going to make a mistake. They don't know the halacha that we don't trust other Bezin. They're going to say, oh, you could trust another Bezin. Omer, Rav Dimi, Min Arda, says Rav Dimi, Hilchasa, Ein Choshin, Le Bezin, Toyin. So remember this. Rav Dimi is the one that says, La halacha, we are not concerned about a bezdin which makes a mistake. As the Gemara, Omashim and the Rava, Barava says, we are concerned. You don't do a chalitza unless bezdin knows for a fact that this is the Yavama, this is the Yavam. There was a, there's a, a real Shaila and Shuva in a Sefer that says, what if a person commits suicide? Does he have to do chalitza? No. Does his wife have to do chalitza? So the, the answer is obviously yes. He writes, no, you don't have to. Why? Because it says mufurish in the Shulchan Aruch. It says, it says in Shulchan Aruch, um, 
המעבד עצמו לדס, זה זה שחור, המעבד עצמו לדס, אין חולצם עליו. אין חולצם עליו, אין הלכס אבלוס, אתה מרמוב את השירות, את השירות. אז הוא אמר, אין חולצם עליו. אז הוא אמר, אה, אתה לא תוכל להיצע. מה זה שהיה? אז, ואין ממענים. אז זה מאוד חשוב. מה זה מיון? Those of you who are new to the shear, let's just show you what Miyun is real quickly. You have a mother, brother, and a small young girl, and a father. And the father goes bye-bye. So now, the brother or the mother marry off this youngster to Yoshebet. Now, she could, since it's only a Kiddush in the Rabbanon, the, fa- the father has the right to marry off in the Raisa, but not the brother. So therefore, if she just says, if she be Yoshebet, Then she just says those words in front of the bez, then poof. It's not, a, it's not a marriage anymore. Okay. The whole machloik is achroinim, if you could do miyun bezman hazeh, let's say a brother decided to marry off his 10-year-old sister, could she just say yiyevshi? And they were said, no, you can't do it bezman hazeh. And the shayla is, did Klai Yisrael accept that minig or not? And I forgot, one of the achroinim says, what do you mean accept the minig? It, it hardly ever happened. It happened once or twice. To accept the minute, you have to do something over and over and over. Oh, Klai Yisrael accepted. Okay. Shiloh. When does she have to say she doesn't want the person? Whenever she feels like it until she's 12. Until she's 12. Yeah. <coughs> Once she's 12 years old, then, then, the, then the Kiddushan becomes a regular Kiddushan. She's married. La la. Huh? She's married to the <coughs> After she does a EF shit. She psula or not psula. Okay. Get into it. Says the Gemara. Hilchazen Chashil Vezen Toy. Bezdin cannot do chalitza unless they know the whole situation. They cannot do miyun unless they know the girl, they know the chasen. Therefore, if you witnessed a Bezdin doing it, that means they knew it. And if they knew it, you can write it down. Get chalitza, get miyun, have a pishay makirim. My time, huh? Must be the reason. You see, that Why does the rabbi say that you don't do miyun in front of the bezin unless you know? Because you're chayshish for a bezin tayin. You're concerned that the bezin is going to be loy. Bezin basa bezdin o loy daiki. The problem is one bezin is going to create a problem for another bezin. Because another bezin, the second bezin is going to say, oh, they probably looked into it. That's one bezin after another bezin. But bezin basa edim daiki. One bezin that follows edim Then they're not going to stab, they're not going to say, oh, the Aiden knew what they're talking about. They are going to look into it and they don't make a mistake. Rabboisai, have a wonderful day.